As was mentioned, there are several Askanim that are here from, from Lakewood and other cities, and it's a tremendous covet for us, as well as an inspiration to us, to see that they are here to support Lima de Terra and the opening of our Kolo. It's a pleasure to ask one of, uh, we have a couple of that are going to speak, but first one, um, Baruch Jeremiah, uh, told me that he's so passionate about the importance of coals, that his personal tzedakah is by and large going to coals, to coals, to and he, he would love the opportunity to share with you his passion, and it's our honor to ask him to speak as well. great honor and humility to present to you tonight a couple of words. Rishutz, Kala Kala Kodesh Hazem, and more so, we are standing in the presence of one of the Gedolei Hadar, or a few of the Gedolei Hadar. Shmuel Kamenetsky Shlita, the Rashiva of Lakewood, the Makil Kotla Shlita. Our bracha to them is, may they both be zeichet to continue to lead us at Biz Gail Tzedek, Mary Amen. The Rashiva's grand, the Rashiva's father. And the Rashiva's grandfather was Baron Cutler and Abyakov Kamenetsky. Abyakov Kamenetsky was the Rashiva in Tarvadas, and Baron Cutler was the Rashiva of Lakewood. What they both did 60 years ago built the world after the Nazis destroyed it, one young man at a time. Abyakov Kamenetsky in Tarvadas. Rabbi Cutler and Lakewood, and they had visions just like everybody in this room. One young man at a time, and everybody laughed at them, and nobody took them seriously. There were a few that did. And that's what Tarvadas became, and that's what Lakewood became, the nucleus of the world, the epicenter of the globe. Only because they had that vision and they had that dream. I want to share with you a story. In June of last summer, I was in Eastern Europe. I went to Theresienstadt. I was standing in the gas chambers. It almost defies logic what went on there. We went to Budapest, to the Dana River, known as the Shoe Memorial. And in the, at that Shoe Memorial, the story goes, that Hitler killed 30,000 children in one day. The sea turned red from Jewish blood. Yet two weeks ago, I was at the Lakewood Cheder, inaugurated a new building. 260,000 square feet, full to capacity with thousands and thousands of children sitting and learning. That happened because of the vision of Rabbi Aaron Kotler and Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky. Those children. Every single one of them are sitting in those classrooms because of their vision. Ladies and gentlemen, I won't take a lot of time, but what you're here to do tonight to inaugurate this coil, you're not here to inaugurate just a couple of guys learning. There are 125,000 Jews in Atlanta. 
You are here for their future, one younger man at a time. You are investing today in the future of your children and your grandchildren. The city of Atlanta, instead of building buildings, you are building skyscrapers tonight. There was a vart that I saw this week as Parsha's boy, talking about Klai Yisrael went out of Mitzrayim. There was a Pasuk in Parsha Shemais that the entire Yeshua of Klai Yisrael came out of this Pasuk. The Pasuk says, Vayomaz Pare Melech Mitzrayim, Vayonchu B'nei Yisrael Men Avoida Vayizaku, Vatal Shavosim Alekim Men Avoida. It says that Parai died, and Hashem heard the screams of the people screaming in Mitzrayim. From that Pusik is where Moshe Rabbeinu went, started talking to the Skenim, the story with the Nachash, the sticks, Dom, Tzfardea, the Makos, Makos Bechiris, Kriis, Yamsef. World War II, up until today where we're standing here. That's where it all started. So Rashi says, Paroi really didn't die. Paroi got saras, got sick, and to cure himself, he took a bath in the blood of the Jewish children. So the Beis Aaron asks, why does the Pusik say that Hashem heard the screams from people working? Should have said that Hashem heard the screams from the Jewish children's blood. Fathers and mothers crying. And he answers with a Gemara Moed Katan. Gemara Moed Katan, Chavdal Ramad Beis. The Gemara says that if a person, Chas V'Sholem, loses a child, at what age do you give a hesped, do you give a eulogy for that child? So the Gemara says sometimes at three, sometimes at four. Less than three, no. Less than four, no. So the Gemara says, so the Gemara asks, what does it mean sometimes? So the Gemara says, if a rich man loses a child, the first time you give a eulogy for that child is when he's four. If it's a poor, if it's a poor man, when he's three. Asks Rashi the obvious question that we're all thinking now. Does it make a difference if a person loses a child, if he's wealthy or if he's non-wealthy? That's the end of the world for anybody. And Rashi says, very scary answer says, if a person loses a child and he has no money, he has nothing to hang his head on. So technically, we don't, we don't give a hesped for any child until he's four. But because we feel bad that he lost everything, we do it at three. The Beisaren says, Klai Yisrael turned to Parai, and they told him, we are trying to build Yiddish Adiris. We are trying to build cities and communities. As we all know in Mitzrayim, Lashinias Lashoinam, Lashinias Malbusham, Lashinias Levusham, they didn't change their names, they didn't change their clothes, and they didn't change their name, and Levusham, Malbusham, and Lashoinam. Their language. They turned to Pari and they said, you want to give us bricks? You don't want to give us bricks. You want to give us straw? You don't want to give us straw, it doesn't matter. We're going home at night and we're building Yiddish Adirs. Destroy us, make us work hard. At the end of the day, we're coming home. Now that you took our children away, Parai took a bath in the blood of Jewish children. What didn't bother us yesterday, bothers us today. Today, we are crying about the work that you're doing. Yesterday it didn't bother us. <coughs> I want to share with you a story that I think everybody walking here tonight, everybody walking out of here tonight will feel that they're doing the greatest investment of their lifetime. I was at a Achnosa Sefer Torah about five years ago. They presented a Sefer Torah to a 90-year-old woman as a gift when she turned 90. 
And a speaker got up and he said the following story. 1944, after they, they were saved from Auschwitz, they didn't have papers to come to the United States. So they ended up in a small country in South America called Uruguay. They arrived on a Thursday. Matsu Chavez, the Russian Kahila, the Scott and the Jack of this town, came into them, to this couple, and they said, we need to build a yeshiva. We need to start our life over. We need a yeshiva to, to send our children. And he tells them, give me five minutes, I'll come right back. He goes into his wife, and he says, we came with $20 that they got from the DP camps, the joint gave them $20. I need that $20. And his wife asked him, for what? He says, we are going to build the yeshiva. And he says, and his wife tells him, what do you mean? We don't even have children yet. And he said, Hashem is going to help. We're going to rebuild. We're going to have children. I'd rather die from hunger than my children die from spiritual hunger and not having the yeshiva. At that Achnosa Sefer Torah, there were five generations that were there to present that lady with that present. You know how I know this story is a true story? Because I am one of those five generations. My children learn Tyra. My daughter goes to a Jewish school. I learned in a Kail. I am a recipient of that $20. Now, Mr. Italanter, Mr. Arno of the presidents of this town, Ms. Kahila. You are known to be very respectful businessmen, successful guys. Is there a greater return on a $20 investment than that? Tonight is your chance to make that same investment. Just like that lady, Mrs. Friedman, turned that $20 into a value of billions and billions of dollars. These Jungalites sitting here tonight are the same, are, are, were presented the same opportunity. There are 125,000 Jews in Atlanta. We can build Atlanta to be the next Lakewood, just like our Baron did. One Jungaman at a time. I want to close with the following word. Pusik says in Tehillim, Davra Melech quotes the following Pusik. Gal Enai, open my eyes, Vahabito, and I'll understand. Neflois, the wonders, Yitara Secha, from Yitara. Asks of Aaron Baxt, what is the true meaning of this Pusik? Many of you probably said it thousands of times. What does it even mean? And he asks a wonderful question, which is actually apropos to this week's Parsha. Claudius Yisrael had the most miraculous Nisan. Dom, Tzvardea, Makas Bechayris, Kriyas Yamsev, things that never happen in history ever again. Why did Hashem not give us even 10% of that ever again. Why do you never show these Nisan? Once, twice, never? And he answers it with a muscle. When a little child gets his shoes for the first time, the father or mother takes him to the store, and he puts on the little child's shoe. He doesn't let the kid just go off on his own. He holds him, makes sure he takes one step, holds his hand, another step, another step, another step. The next day, same thing, maybe a couple of steps less. But then when the kid finally learns how to walk, he lets him go. That same child, six months later, comes for a new pair of shoes. The only thing the father or mother does is buy him the pair of shoes. Once he bought him the pair of shoes, the kid's on his own. 
says our Baron Baxt, before the Rabbani Shalom gave us the Torah, before the Rabbani Shalom gave us these young delight, all we had was the Nisim and the Flois to hold on to the Muna. Today that we have the Torah, today that we have these young delight, today that we have these Rabbonim, today that we have Reb Shmuel and Reb Akil, we are like that child who has the shoe and all he needs, who knows how to walk. All he needs is the father to give him the shoe. And he quotes the Pasuk, and now we can understand it beautifully. Gal Enai, open my eyes, Vihabita, and let me understand the flows, the wonders of the world, Mitayra Secha, from our wonderful, beautiful, sweet Torah. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a wonderful Kyle across the street, an Ashkenazi Kyle. They have made thousands of balichus. Tonight, there is another Kyle that we're starting. And I need to obviously give a mention to Reb David Silverman, who this community loves and adores. I've read about him in the Hamadia. <laughs> From what I understand, it's only the tip of the iceberg. But more so, tonight you're, we're starting a psicha for you in the light that are going to sit and learn. And if we help them, if we help support them, I know it's not a fundraising, but between me and you, they're going to need checks. <laughs> but if we continue to guide them, support them, help them succeed, I can assure you, in a matter of time, the city of Atlanta will build a yeshiva with 260,000 square feet packed to capacity with Tanaika Shabbos Rabbi. Thank you for listening.